As the festive holiday season gets into full swing, many of our hospitals around the country experience a marked increase in casualties, leaving healthcare facilities overburdened. With load shedding as an added factor, the task becomes even more difficult. To look at the state of readiness for Limpopo hospitals around this time of the year, let's speak to the Limpopo Health MEC, Dr. Bobby Ramatuba. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Now, what measures has the province of Limpopo taken to ensure the readiness of hospitals for the festive season? Um, morning and, and morning to all your viewers out there. Yes, indeed, as a province, we, we know that, firstly, we are tourism destination to many of those holiday makers, both nation, national and, and international. Uh, secondly, we know that there is any uh, one major road uh, that uh, uh, history or experience has taught us that uh, during this time, the rate of accident, uh, the trauma, it's, it's very high. So that's why as early as November, if, if you would remember, we embark on a uh, in, in Mukopani Hospital, Fort Tucker, these are hospitals that are on N1 to try to clear beds, especially on orthopedic cases. And we've been able to successfully do that and, and free quite a number of, of beds so that this time around we do not find ourselves having to have a lot of backlogs. Now, when you talk about the state of readiness uh, for facilities, uh, for us, we start with uh, what happens in terms of our response team, looking at our emergency medical services personnel to say, are our fleet ready, limited as they are, but have they been uh, serviced? Do we have staff? Uh, what, what is it, uh, other resources that will be required to respond to any trauma that could be uh, reported to us? And then we then secondly look at our hospitals and starting with our emergency care. Are we having enough staff uh, that, that will be able to be on duty this time around? We tend to limit uh, uh, those of our human resources, especially operational, to go and leave. What we do, to be fair, we say one group will be up working during this period of December. Then the next week, when, uh, when we'll be doing a New Year's uh, weekend, the other group will work. So everyone has a chance to say, if I don't spend Christmas with my family, but I'll, I'll spend a New Year with them. But we also then look at, in November we had major drills in our hospitals uh, to say, in case you've got a major accident of a bus, we've seen it happening tomorrow, uh, sorry, in the past. If tomorrow maybe you have that, what do you do? Uh, obviously the staff that are on duty will not be able to cope. How do we activate those who are off duty? How do we work together with the private sector to say jointly if it's a disaster, that could happen. How do we then work towards that? But having said that, we all know that the hospitals to function, it's not only the nurses and the doctors or health professionals. We also need a lot of support staff. We have rightfully said uh, with this kind of load shedding. In the past, when load shedding was not as worse as it is now, you, you would have to really assess the availability of diesels, your generator must have been serviced and know that they are working. But this time around, we tend to check the generator, uh, 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 whether it's functional or operational, every twice a day. We also go and check the availability of diesel on an hourly basis. You know, our maintenance team now is operating like the doctors who will do uh, the rounds uh, maybe four hourly. This time around, uh, they must do their rounds to check if indeed diesel is available so that we can make sure that if, if they, we see danger, we then have to activate uh, our supply chain to say how do we get emergency order for such. So, so it's quite a very uh, difficult uh, time uh, mm -hmm. when you look at that. But otherwise, I can reassure all those that are visiting the province and all those that are within the province that indeed difficult as it is, but we know there is no a disaster that we will not be able to handle as a province. You can see we are still at work. Our executive, starting with the HOD, we have agreed uh, we will go on leave probably after uh, January when the schools have opened. But for now, 
for the sake of the people of this country and the province, we need to be at work so that we, uh, there's no disaster that happened and we are not available to be able to respond to, uh, to that disaster. Well, certainly, and it's good to know that your maintenance teams are working just as hard as your doctors are. Speaking of load shedding, um, MEC, what's the cost implication? I mean, you spoke of diesel, you spoke of maintenance. What's, what's the cost implication to the province with regards to mitigating the issues of load shedding? No, it's, it's, a, it's a quite a problem and it is stressful, I can indicate to you. Uh, maybe if I'm just to give a background, prior the, the load to get to four and six. As a province, we have started a work to say we need all our clinics to operate 24 hours. Therefore, our clinics must be equipped with generators. We started that project, but that project could not see the daylight as the load shedding stages increased because now the focus had to move out of clinics. Although we had generators in all our facilities, the problem is the generator was meant mainly for standby for that 30 minutes when there would be load shedding. But now because it goes for more than two to three hours at times, then that generator is now becoming the main source of energy supply in the hospital. Therefore, you find that their lifespan also you cannot uh, uh, rely on. Hence, we are now having breakdowns of generators a week after week and it means the little resources that we had put to empower our clinics to run 24 hours, we are now shifting them towards uh, replacing the hospital because you can't uh, operate or function a hospital without a generator. When it comes to the diesel cost itself, even the cost has gone very high. Some of our suppliers taking advantage of the current situation. We have seen that the prices that they are now quoting us and they know that you can't do without. It's a matter of life and death when you talk about energy supply in a hospital. There's in no way that you can function without electricity in the hospital. So they take advantage and you find that the price of diesel has been doubled. We, we have seen that the expenditure that we used to spend on diesel hours the other day with a sea of mountain trying to look at uh, what they used to spend prior to this and now. Uh, hence, we want to appreciate the fact that Mangwen was one of the hospitals that was exempted. But the, the calls for us to exempt all the, the hospitals, we think it's still relevant and, and we will continue uh, to make that call because this is the money that we were supposed to be focusing uh, on buying patient medicine, on doing other things to improve even the infrastructure. You know our facilities are dilapidated and it just needs one storm. One storm, then the ceiling, uh, the roof is blown out. So we need to continue maintaining this infrastructure that is very old, that has not been maintained. But the work for maintenance, it's really a, it's slow because the resources towards maintenance, it's now diverted towards making sure that diesel is available, that generators, if it is, there's a breakdown of a generator, it is repaired immediately or you must always uh, get new generators that are there, uh, which will be on standby for in case another hospital has a problem, you can be able to assist them with that generator. Mm, so yes, imagine it is putting a strain on us. There must be quite a strain on your department. Emis, I just want us quickly to touch on measles and malaria. We know that that's now throwing another spanner <coughs> in the works. Um, the province recorded 110 cases of, of res lab results of measles in the last couple of days. Just talk us through the measles as well as the malaria drive that you will be embarking on, especially now during the festive season. I think the, the measles, like we, we previously said, that uh, uh, when we were busy with dealing with COVID-19, we knew that the healthcare services also will be affected. And one of the areas... It's on the immunization uh, program because every two years, what we usually do as a province, we go on a measles drive vaccine uh, where we always remind parents working with basic education, uh, ESGs, ECGs, sorry, <clears throat> to try to check if all our children are up to date in terms of measles. So 2020, 2021, and also this year, and we, we were not able to do that drive because the focus was on fighting COVID. 
only to realize that in, in some instances the parents also were not visiting our clinics uh, for measles vaccines during that period, some with the myth of being afraid that my child might get COVID at the clinic. So they stay away from a healthcare facility as long as the child is not sick. So that has had that negative impact. And then also at some stage, I think I remember 2020 and beginning of 2021, the country had a challenge in terms of measles vaccines shortages, which we know it was also as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. So when we were supposed to be now dealing with the catch-up uh, vaccines for that, uh, we then started also with the, 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 the response uh, team uh, putting it up uh, its, its um, a, a process uh, or its programs uh, to say how do we deal with this uh, catch-up and also anticipating we might have this outbreak. So that is uh, when the surveillance team, uh, working with NICD on the ground, dealing with this matter, they were able to pick up. So since um, uh, October, when we picked up our first cases, we have been able to uh, 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 vaccinate um, on a drive, especially starting with Kukune District, which was the first one to be declared an outbreak, followed by Mupani. Now we all have all our five districts uh, to be there. So we have been working with uh, different st stakeholders to put an awareness, especially now with the festive seasons. We right. also, prior the school closure, had gone all out and even advised those who will be visiting, because you know, in Limpopo, it's one of those rural provinces where there are a number of uh, people residing in Limpopo who are in other provinces, mainly Gauteng and Western Cape, for economic opportunities. And they are residing there with their children, studying there. So this is the time when they are coming back home. So we, we have made a warning there to say, make sure that your child has got all the, or is fully vaccinated, receive all the dosages, as long as the child is six months and, and above. In order and for if us to be able to not the case, Unfortunately, get the case, I am going to cut you in there. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. But thank you for that update. It's very important information in ensuring that our parents go out there and vaccinate their young ones in order for us to be able to curb the measles outbreak. Thank you so much for your time, MEC. That was Limpopo Health MEC, Dr. Bobby Ramatuba, speaking to us there about the readiness of their province in terms of their hospitals.